we are stepping up the level of our services. Our goal is to treat your loved ones with the respect they deserve. We are taking our services to new heights. We are stepping in a new direction. Step into the new millennium with Golden Gate. The service begins and never ends. Hello and welcome to Ask the Undertaker, an open honest look at your funeral service brought to you by Golden Gate Funeral Home and Crematory with facilities in Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and Tallulah, Louisiana. I'm your host, John Beckwith Jr. and I'm joined today by the pastor, A. Louis Eton of the Church and Living God, Temple 280. Blessings on you. We have our chief film director, Mr. Kevin Haynes. Hello, everyone. We have our sister and chief financial officer, Miss Carolyn Haynes. Hello there. And we have our lead in Bomber. Let's welcome her to the show, Miss Sandy J. Hello. All right. Today we come from Genesis, the 50th chapter and the second verse. Dr. Eton, you read that for us. And the word of God says, and Joseph commanded his servant, the physician, to embalm his father. And the physician embalmed Israel. All right. Today the question is, do you want to be embalmed? Carolyn, do you want to be embalmed? I do, John, because I think to me, I want my family to see me at least one last time. And I think embalming would have helped that a lot. <laughs> and it's going to be important they say goodbye. Yes, it is. And you want to look nice when yes, they say I goodbye. Do. Yes, I do. Chief, you want to be involved? Most definitely. Okay. Uh, I want the fresh haircut. I want my goatee trimmed, the manicure, you know, the pedicure, all of that. All of that. So I can look better dead than I did alive. Is that right? Yes, you can. How does an embalmer do that? <laughs> they can do it. I mean, it's just I've seen it done, you know, several times. I've had to do it myself. <laughs> and, and it's a lot easier, you know, because... You know, I'm not moving around or anything like that. You know? <laughs> Don't have to put me to sleep. Yeah, I'm, already. To sleep. I'm already. Asleep. So you, you think they can give me a little liposuction? Most definitely. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Carolyn, I might have someplace I need a little Botox or things of that sort. That I can get all that doing that, To flatten that stomach area uh -huh. there, tighten it up a little bit, that would be great. An embalmer can, can do, do that. that. Now, is it any extra charge, Sandy J, for you to give me a little liposuction? No, no charge at all. You won't charge me <laughs> no, any extra no for extra, that? No extra. So don't forget me now <laughs> during that time. What about you? Uh, you want to be embalmed? Yes, sir. And the reason why, because I want to have more than one service. More than one service. More than okay. one service. And I want to look just as natural as the other service I did the first one. And we're going to need to do some embalming right. in order for that to happen. To happen. Yes, sir. Now, is it a law that I have to be embalmed, Sandy J? No, it is not a law in Texas. Okay, so in the state of Texas, I don't have to be embalmed. It is a choice. Yes. Sir. Now, Carolyn, I can make that choice or my family can make that choice for me. And I definitely want to be the one to make that choice for myself. And we're telling you as well. So get that pre-need and put everything in it. Put in it that the fact that you do or you do not want to embalm so your family knows your wishes. When people tell their family they don't want to be embalmed, uh, Chief, and that, that we, we do hear that sometimes. People say, I don't want to be embalmed for whatever reason, maybe for religious purpose or they just want a direct burial. Do you, do you find sometimes that can be a little selfish? It can because everybody, well, most people want to say goodbye in some form or fashion. And, you know, for, as for me, I would like to just see, you know, my loved one and possibly even touch my loved one. Carolyn, what we see quite often at the funeral home and that the public don't see is that people come by all day, every day, and ask to see this deceased person. Exactly. They'll say, listen, I'm an ex this, or I went to school with them. Can I see, see them? them? And what people don't understand, Sandy J, in the state of Texas, it's not a law to embalm, but if you're going to have a public viewing, do I have to be embalmed if I'm having a public viewing? <laughs> yes, you do. And that's where the difference yes. come in, because families don't understand how many people want to see their loved, loved ones. Mm -hmm. How often do we have somebody come <laughs> by, and uh, you, you work as a greeter there as well as a chaplain, how often does someone come say, I want to see someone's body? Every day, all day. Every day, all, okay. people want to see, see someone. People. That's right. And if we don't embalm them, we can't show it to them, can we? No, sir. And that goes a long no, way. No and if I don't embalm you, Carol, I can't make you look pretty. How, how important is it that you look good every day? Oh, very important. That's why it takes me about 45 minutes every day just to get ready to present myself to the public. And I need to be embalmed and I need them to make me look pretty as well. Because again, I am being presented to the public, to my family, to my friends 
everyone that wants to come by. So it's very important to me, John, to look good. How long it take you to get ready in the morning, Chief? Well, she may disagree, but it takes mm -hmm. me about 45 minutes. About I 40. do. <laughs> <laughs> so she said it takes longer yes, than 45 it does. minutes? Yes, it does. So your looks are important to you? Yes, sir. Most so if your looks are important to you in life, you think they may be important in death? Yes, because I, I want that to be an everlasting memory, and, and my friends that come by, and, and even my foes, you know, because mm -hmm. you want them to, to see to you make at your sure, best. to make sure that I'm gone. Uh -huh. Yeah, I want to look good. You want to look good. Yeah. And in order for us to do that, we got to have a Sandy J come in and handle that for us. How long right. it take you to get ready in the morning, uh, Pastor? Well, it takes between 35 and 45 minutes. Isn't that something? Now, do you want us to put them white shoes on you when you pass away? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some shoes, I don't want my feet to be cold. So I want <laughs> now, in order for me to put them shoes on, I you do understand, I'm going to have to embalm you, right? Yes, sir. So, Carolyn, we want people to put that in writing. Yes, either sir. you do or, or you do not. not. Now, there's three things, Chief. And we talk about embalming, a lot of people say, well, what is this embalming thing? Uh, let's, try to, let's try to explain a little bit. What, what's one portion of embalming? Well, first portion, uh, probably the most important, is disinfection. Disinfection. So yes. we actually sanitize the deceased person. Mm -hmm. yes. And Carolyn, regardless of the religion, right. even in our Muslim faith, uh, the bodies are still washed mm -hmm. and then wrapped, wrapped and buried. So a lot of people think that the body is not being embalmed because embalming includes some chemical Chemicals. injection. Right. So that's not our case. We're not gonna chemically inject someone that just wants to be disinfected. No but that is a part of embalming. Most definitely, John, and as Kevin stated, a very important part because cleanliness, I mean, you take your own bath every day. We want to make sure that you have a bath during the embalming procedure while we get you dressed, get you ready for your family and your friends to come and see. So sanitation is very, very important in that also we must disinfect. Sometimes there are some diseases, there are some germs, the like, that comes with a deceased person. So therefore, sanitation is very important. And Santa Jay, we don't kill the germs on the inside, but some things are surface. So if we can wash this with a disinfectant soap, and we see quite often that people want to touch their loved one. They want to rub their hands. Some people actually walk up have you ever seen someone kiss someone? Yes. yes. You've actually witnessed someone yes. kiss after you have embalmed that yes. body. And you're probably saying to yourself, I'm glad I did a good job embalming <laughs> yes. because now mm -hmm. they have kissed. Their, and that's our job, yes. mm -hmm. uh, Chief, as embalmers to make sure that that person is disinfected. Yes. Yeah, we have to step in that person's shoes. I mean, we, you know, of course, we do it every day. But at that moment, when those people walk in to see their loved one, we have to, you know, even before they walk in to see their loved one, we have to put ourselves in their position. What would we want to do? What, is, what are the possibilities of us, you know, to rubbing their hands, you know, kissing without their cheeks? Gloves or, and without mm -hmm. gloves and protective or gear. Yes. And Carolyn, he talked about disinfectant. What's another part of embalming that's important? Well, presentation. And we've okay. been talking about that, you know, doing the show about how you look, how you want to look. So we, doing embalming, we present you to your family and your friends. So presentation is very important in embalming. And what about restoring? Is restoring important to, to bring me back, and we say this quite often in Mortuary College, to lifelike yes. appearance? Is that important it's to restore important. me yes. to where I once was? Quite often sickness will jump in and take over. Right. Disease will come in and make me lose weight or whatever the case may change the color of my skin. Mm -hmm. But to restore me back, how important is that? That is very important because you want to remember that person like they were. And that's... Uh, and how they were in, in life, life, in their prime, mm -hmm. uh -huh. probably well, not got. in their... Sickness. sickness. Not sickness. in their that's sickness. Right. Sickness. No one wants to be remembered as the person who lost the weight. Mm -mm. So we're able to come in to restore them back to... Their lifelike appearance before death, before the illness, before their bodies were ravished. So yes, we're able to do that with the embalming procedure. What's another part of embalming, Chief? Preservation. Okay, preservation. And yeah. that's what most people kind of hang their hat on when we talk about yes. embalming. Everybody start thinking about the chemicals we're mm -hmm. going to uh, put inside of them. And don't do that to me. They're thinking of the preservation of the body. Why is it important to temporarily preserve a body? Because we want to temporarily hold off the decomposition. Because, you know, decomposition is going to happen. And it's going to continue to happen. Mm -hmm, but with the preservation, we can stall that, that, which will give us time to have that public viewing, which will give us time to travel if we need to and have the service uh, for that, you know, that public to see. And like myself, I want five yeah. days of viewing. Mm -hmm. You're going to
to have to preserve my body in order to make that yes. happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you want more than one service, yes. uh, Pastor. Yes. You're gonna we're going to have to preserve your body in order to do it. And there's three ways we preserve bodies. Give me one way that we preserve a body uh, when we do the embalming procedure. Uh, the, <clears throat> number one is our doing the arterial Arterial injection. injection. Yes. Now that sounds pretty deep, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> and, <pain. laughs> and you probably need to go to school to learn how to do a arterial, arterial injection. injection. How long do you have to go to school, uh, Sandy, in order to do arterial injection? Uh, you have to go to school for three years. The first two will be going to college and the one year would be apprenticeship. So apprenticeship. I have to spend three years of school. Yes. Two years classroom. Yes. And another year internship yes. in order to become an embalmer. So you know how to arterially Inject. embalm a body. Okay. What's another way we embalm a deceased person, uh, Carol? Well, we call it hypo. So okay. it's hyperdermic. So you use a needle okay. to inject those chemicals into the loved one. So if I wanted to get embalming fluid into the tissues, I can use a hypodermic instrument and hypodermically inject it. The yes. same way the pastor, or the pastor, the <laughs> same way the doctor would give me a shot. Right. Mm -hmm. You can put it in in that way. Yes. What's another way, uh, Chief? Surface embalming. Okay. You explain that you want to be, you know, going to have five different services. Uh -huh. We're probably going to have to do a little surface okay. embalming on the exterior, you know, of your body. And we do that in that order: arteria first, hypodermically second, and then, if needed, Sur surface embalming. Now, surface embalming has proved to be very effective. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You ever heard of mummies? Yes. You know how the Egyptians, even to this <laughs> yes. day, were able to still yes. look at mummies. That's exactly. right. Because they surface embalm those bodies. That worked pretty well, and didn't that it? Worked, that worked great. <laughs> <laughs> it works great today. <laughs> now, that's a preservation there, yes, isn't it? Sir. It is. Because after all these years, you can still get the opportunity to see these bodies. Right. Good job, Carol. Very good job. Very, Very good, good job. <laughs> we call it fluid, they call it spice. Exactly, they call it spices and many different things because embalming fluid of made, is made of many different things. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people talk about the formaldehyde in the embalming fluid, which is a very important ingredient. Mm -hmm. But there's many other ingredients inside that embalming fluid as well, isn't it? We have some buffers, we have some mm -hmm. tissue softeners, we even have some humectants. color mm -hmm. and humectants, mm -hmm. many different things in this fluid to make our body look presentable. Mm -hmm. yes. So personally, I believe embalming works. Very important <laughs> to me. Very so if anybody asks the question, do I want to be embalmed? My answer is yes. most definitely <laughs> yes. But if your answer is no, Carolyn, you mentioned that they need to tell their loved one one way. Or the other. Or the other. Yes. What's the best way to do that? In writing. You can put it in your pre-need as well as your will and then instruct the person that you have over those items, especially you will, to read it before you have your final viewing and your funeral so that they know exactly what you want. Chief, very popular now, cremation. Mm -hmm. yes. And a lot of people are not being embalmed because they're thinking, I'm gonna be cremated, embalming is not necessary. About 80% of the people we embalm have funeral services first, <laughs> and then they are cremated. 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 So is cremation and embalming, how does that work hand in hand? Well, what we've seen now is that people still want to have a funeral. They want to say goodbye. But because in some instances, it's the person's choice to be cremated. Other instances is the economy. Uh, cemetery charges are extremely expensive now. Very. Mm -hmm. So uh, people are opting to go cremation, but they still want to have that public viewing and they still want to have that funeral. So that's where the embalming comes into play. And Carol, I don't have to be embalmed in order to be cremated. Sandy Jay told us that earlier, State of Texas say, I don't have to be embalmed. And we call every family, if we don't yes. get it either in writing mm -hmm. or verbally, we ask, do you want your loved one? To be embalmed. Okay. And with the cremation aspect, John, the only way that most of the time they don't choose embalming, if they want what is called a direct cremation. Okay. I want no service of any kind. I want to be brought to their funeral home. I want to be refrigerated you get the necessary permits. We even offer witnessing for our family should they want to. But then you go directly into the crematory chamber. So then there is no public viewing, there's no one else to see you. So in that instance, they say, I do not want to be in mom. And that's normally the case. Now there are certain cases you don't have a choice. <laughs> Give me one of those choices, uh, Carol. Well, one would be on common carriers, okay. our airplanes, our trains, and our ships. That's a requirement on those particular transportation venues 
that you must be involved. You must be involved. Mm -hmm. And they give us a couple of options, but not very many, no, uh, Chief. They say, listen, you better make sure you're in an enclosed container. Yeah. You may have to pack the body with certain type of dry ice dry and ice. things. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with a common carrier, they have a right to determine the method? method of preserving that body on their airplane, on their ship, on their train. Right. Why do you think they have that right to do that, Chief? Well, because it's, number one, it's theirs. Okay. And, and they're looking out for the other people who are exactly. utilizing mm -hmm. their carrier. Uh, and then some states, uh, you know, not all states, but some states require, you know, if you cross the state line, mm -hmm. you know, there has to be some embalming. There got to be mm -hmm. some type of preservation yeah. done yes, before right. you can transport this body across state lines. And Carol, there's some countries mm -hmm. that, that will not allow us to bring that body into that country that unless body. it's been embalmed. That is correct. And most of those are our African countries and other countries of that nature. But yes, sir, you must be embalmed and they want that certificate signed, notarized by that embalmer by that before embalmer. they're going to allow us to bring you to their country. So you may have had the request of not being embalmed, mm -hmm. but if you want to be taken to another place, yes. you have to respect their laws, and their rules, their rules yes, as well as their regulations. Yes. Right. That just makes sense, doesn't it, Sandy J? <laughs> <laughs> now, Sandy J is the embalmer who embalmed Michael for Her brother. Yes. And excellent job. Yes, she You did. agree mm -hmm. with that? Yes. So that's definitely. why it's so important you have someone on your staff that can take Pick care of your loved ones on that yes. level. Yes, sir. Now, Carolyn, how expensive is embalming? Now, people say, I don't want to be embalmed because I want to pay all that money. Well, at Golden Gate Funeral Home, it's only $375. That's one of the least charges that we have for your funeral. So embalming is not that expensive. No, it's less than $400 at Golden Gate Funeral Home. A lot of people say, I don't want to be embalmed. They're going to charge me something extra. Right. And that's the reason I don't want it. But that's not the case. And everything we just went over about what embalming involves and everything that it does for you, that's a very inexpensive cost. Very inexpensive. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And do you protect yourself when you're embalming, Sandy J? Yes. How do you, or what do you wear to protect yourself? I wear protective gear, okay. personal protective equipment gear. Now, is that from head to toe? Head to toe. <laughs> so you cover your hair, you cover your face, you cover yes. your clothing, even your shoes yes. is covered? everything is covered. That's completely covered. Carol, that's a lot, isn't it? It is a lot, John, but because we, like Sandy J and other embalmers, we mm -hmm. want them to be protected. And they, we've already explained there are some things that come with deceased people. And then when you walk out of there, people, a, lot of, a lot of people will say, well, why do you cover your shoes? But then you walk other places. And we want you to be protected because you'll go home to your family. That's so important because mm -hmm. the Center of Disease Control does not say embalming is necessary. Why do you think they don't say it's necessary, Chief? You know, I've, I've really wondered why they mm -hmm. say that. I just... To me, I think it's just necessary. Uh, why the, <laughs> Your choice is yeah, to be involved. I, know, but I don't know who came up with that one. <laughs> and that's, that's their rule. They say yeah, you don't have to be. Rule. I think a lot of people, uh, pastors, under the impression once we embalm you, that we kill those diseases. Do we kill the disease of things like HIV? Or, those things are not killed during embalming, are they? No, sir. Those things are not killed. And that's one thing we letting the public know. You know, certain things that uh, people think it's happening, not really happening. Because they think if we put that embalming fluid in right, them, everything right. is dies. But that's not true, is that's it, Carol? True. No, it's not. And then uh, uh, most of our embalming fluid is simply for preservation purposes. It's not for the idea of killing the disease that you had in life. But most of your diseases live off of people that are alive, human tissue and the like, and that dies with you. So therefore, then that disease, and then like Sandy says, we make sure that she's protected so that it's not given to the public and our families. It's important that people understand bodily fluids, that we not interchange bodily fluids. And if we choose to, we take a chance on catching the disease. Do you agree with that, Sandy J? Yes. It's the bodily fluids, Carolyn. You don't want to come in contact with anyone's blood, right. mm -mm. anyone's saliva, or anything that belongs to another person. Right. Because when you come in contact with it, you take a chance of catching Getting what, whatever they have. Yeah. Whatever they have. And that's, that's in right. life. And in death. And, death. and, yes, sir. and death. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are watching this right now say, I don't care what this undertaker is saying. I don't want to be embalmed. You say, listen, put it in writing. You don't have to be. Exactly. So get a pre-need. Right. We talk about three other reasons why you should have a pre-need. <laughs> Tell them the other reasons. Uh, well, first and foremost, we talk about all the time is financial. You take care of everything in life for all of your bills, for all of your needs. 
your funeral is one of your needs as well, and you should be the one that pays for your funeral. Another reason financially is that it freezes today's cost. There's nothing else that we can freeze today to use in the future like you can a pre-need. And then emotionally, we talk about all the time, our families are just totally devastated when you pass away. And emotionally, it's unfair for you to make them walk in and actually make funeral arrangements, choose a color, choose a casket, and everything about your funeral. And last, your wishes. We talked about do you want to be embalmed or not. It's your wishes as to what you want for your entire funeral. Make sure you put that in a pre-need. Why does everyone need insurance and a pre-need, Chief? You need insurance because you need to leave an inheritance to your family. You also need to, if you have children, you need to leave something behind for them. They need, they'll have educational needs, they'll have spiritual needs, and you just you need, you need to need some have money it. to do that. You need some money to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and we lose your income. Yes, you pass yes. away, the income stops. Right. The only income we have is the insurance policy that you left behind. Mm -hmm. Why does everybody need a will? You need a will so you won't be fighting and feuding at a certain time. <laughs> and let's say if I don't fight and feud, that's just, I mean, we don't argue about things. We're just a perfect family right. and we don't have those problems. But Carolyn, if you don't leave a will, I don't know what to do with your things, including your children. Exactly. Instructions are the most important thing about a will. You have to let people know what you want done with your assets. We talk about assets all the time. We want to think of those as being material things. But as we've stated previously, your children are your assets. And they need to know, and someone else needs to know, where they will go. Should they still be minors when you pass away? And then you don't want any legal authority deciding where your children can go mm -hmm. or should go. You're the one that knows the people you want them to go to. They're going to go strictly by the law. Well, while we have an embalmer on here, let's take advantage <laughs> of answering all uh, some of the rumors out there about embalmers. Mm, right. But well, Sanjay, I'm going to start off with you <laughs> since okay. you're our lead embalmer. Okay. Are the hands of an embalmer cold? No. No, that's not no. normal. Let's, no. Let's, let's, do a, let's do a check. <laughs> Let me see that. Hands are not cold. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is the first time on television. Our hands are not cold. So that's just a rumor, huh, Chief? Yeah. Yes, sir. That Cold hands is just a rumor. If you have cold hands, it has nothing to do with being an embalmer or not. And we took advantage of that. Okay. You know, people would say, oh, you have cold hands. I said, yes, but I have a warm heart. Right. <laughs> right. But that has nothing, nothing to do with to being do an embalmer. Uh, does embalmers look dead, Carolyn? <laughs> well, I've, I've run across a few that do. <laughs> most, for the most part, no, we do not. Look at us. We're all in the embalming business. And then Sandy J is a very beautiful woman. Yes. And She's an embalmer. She's an so embalmer. No, so sir. embalmers don't look dead. They don't look dead. That's <laughs> no, not your thing. Not. <laughs> <laughs> we hear so many things about it. How do you embalm a body that's uh, been decomposed for a long period of time, Chief? We're talking about a person that may have been left somewhere and that was found. Can that body still be embalmed? Yes, most definitely. You still try, you know, all each step of the embalming process. Okay. So that we do something. You know, so we still try the arterial yes. as well as hypodermically it, and, and surface. surface. Yeah. So we still embalm even if the body's been decomposed for a long period mm -hmm. of time. That is correct. But what about them car accidents? Are, are, do we still embalm people? That's, that's, I mean, the bodies are just mangled. Are they still embalmed? Those bodies still embalmed. Still embalmed still and embalmed. still embalmed in the same, same way, manner. In the same manner. Mm -hmm. Carol, a lot of people don't understand is that a lot of times we're able to fix most situations. Mm -hmm. And that's where the restoration part comes in in embalming. After we've done all of the hypodermic, the arterial, and the surface embalming, we're able to restore. So we're able to put the makeup on. We're able to put then your clothing on and make sure everything is decent and in order. And then, like you said, most of the time you look great and you look better perhaps before the accident. Hmm. How long does that embalming last, Chief? <laughs> as long as necessary. I mean, okay. we you know, continue to do embalming depending on how long and, you know, that we're going to have the person in state or if we're traveling. So we just continue. It's a continuous process. So embalming itself doesn't last forever. No. But if you're still out for viewing or in public view, we're able to continue the embalming right. procedure. Right. We know many stars stayed out for a, a long, long period time. of time. Yeah. I think about James, James Brown, Brown. Yes. how long his body was out. But that embalmer went back constantly and worked with that deceased person. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. 
Yes, we will. So we're able to keep bodies out, and even at Golden Gate Funeral Home, we've kept people for a year. Yes, we have. Yes. And we were able to continue to preserve sure. their body right. for that period mm -hmm. of time. Yes, so when people have. say, how long does that bombing last? It's temporary. Yeah, it's temporary. But we but will continue. be able to continue. continue. So once you embalm a body, you don't have to stop. You can continue to embalm it over and, and over, over again. And over and over and over. So you're able to keep a body forever if you're present if you, as an embalm? Yes, <laughs> if you keep at it. All right. Isn't that something, Carl? We yeah. need to keep your Sandy J on, on, <laughs> on staff yeah. right? yes, to make do. sure that we can keep that going. Yes, we do. How important is it that your body is embalmed? Let's tell mm -hmm. them that. <laughs> it's important because you want to give your family that closure if they want to see you, if they want to touch you. So it's very important. And pictures are a wonder. And I always encourage people to, to bring a recent picture or you know, something so that the embalmer will have something to go by. If in case there is a tragic situation, we can you know, establish, well, OK, this is how this poor person normally you know, lived and looked like. Sadie J, are embalmers required to do continued education? Yes, we are. We so it's sure continuously. Do. So Carolyn, when there's new events happen, I may have went to I went to Marchwood College, became an embalmer back in 1985. So a few things have changed, changed. since 1985. <laughs> I hope we'll figure out exactly. some new things. So we have to continue to go back to school. You have to continue yeah. to learn, John, because it does change, like you stated. Uh, years and years ago, even with the Egyptians and the others, there's still technology that has changed and allows us to be able to do better, a much better job at preservation for your loved ones. So definitely we have to always be in a learning mode. I want to make sure we're very clear. Is embalming required by law in the state of Texas, Chief? <laughs> no, it is not. It is not required. We must have permission from the next of kin or from the deceased person themselves. themselves. And this, I need to make sure this is clear, Carolyn. Who should decide if you're embalmed or not? I should decide whether I'm embalmed. That should not be a decision I leave to my family. Do not leave that to your family. Yes, you make that decision, put it in writing, put it in your pre-need, yes. make sure you put it in writing yes. so your family can get to it and you, they don't have to make that decision for you. For, you. for you. And remember to watch Ask the Undertaker every Saturday night right here on channel 47.2 at seven o'clock p.m. and every Sunday morning on Channel 21 at 5.30 a.m. You all know my favorite? The radio show. The radio show. show every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 11 o'clock a.m. on Heaven 97. That's 9.70 a.m. on your dial. And you know, if you can't get enough of us, you can look at us on GoldenGateForYourHome.com 24 hours a day. And of course, we have our own YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. We are stepping up the level of our services. Our goal is to treat your loved ones with the respect they deserve. We are taking our services to new heights. We are stepping in a new direction. 